renew one of the oldest and most heated rivalries in college basketball. Tonight, the longtime teacher, William Speedy Morris, will again go to the chalkboard to confound the pupil, John Griffith, who once more will show he's learned his lessons well. Inner City Hardwood Wars. It's never pretty. It's always gritty. It's the Hawks, it's the Explorers, and it's next. It's the fourth matchup of John Griffin of St. Joseph's, Speedy Morris of LaSalle, another incarnation of that great rivalry is coming up next. Hi again, everybody. I'm Larry Rosen, joined by Ed Stefanski for game two of our doubleheader. If you don't know it by now, it's the teacher against the pupil. Always fun to see the Roman Catholic connection, Eddie. Exactly, and Speedy Morris said earlier in the evening that he wants to win, obviously, but it's tough because he just loves John Griffin, and after the game, they'll get together. John Griffin doing a really a good job this year. He's decimated with the injuries, and just they could have tanked. He mm -hmm. did, and they're coming back, and they're going to play real hard, and you'll see it tonight. It'll be a war. All right, let's talk about the backcourt of LaSalle, one of the best in the East. First, the guy we're calling the heart, the point guard, Paul Burke. Well, Paul Burke does a great job handling of the basketball and trying to distribute it to the right people. I would think the Hawks tonight will want to see if he can shoot the ball from the outside. He averages 13 points a game, but they'd rather him shoot it than the next guy. <laughs> the other hand. Yes, Kareem Towns is just a terrific kid. The guy we're calling the soul, he's in the top 10 scoring nationally. Nothing shy about young Kareem Towns. No, and Kareem Towns has the green light to shoot at any time, and he will take Take that. The Hawks know it. I look for some junk defenses tonight, maybe playing man-to-man -man against him and the rest of the Hawks in a the zone. They know Kareem Towns is the guy they must stop. St. Joseph's, of course, has lost a couple of terrific would-be senior players, the Bernards, Blunt, and Jones. They're left with a couple of other upperclassmen and inside-outside force. We've always loved the game of the point guard, Rap Curry. Well, Rap Curry does a great job because of the physical specimen. Up top, he's very strong. He can back himself in to get good shots. He's not as quick with the knee injury, but he will get his spot on the court where he can shoot the ball, and he likes to launch the three, too. He's the guy that has to score for the Hawks this evening. Well, LaSalle's real young on the inside, and they're going to have to find a way to stop a man down on the blocks named Carlin Worley. Leading rebounder for the Hawks this year, leading rebounder in the Atlantic 10. He is the man inside, and I don't think LaSalle matches up well at all with him. They have no one that can put a body on this guy. That'll be the key for the Hawks, and Carlin Worley will have to score, and the rebounding margin, the Hawks always out-rebound their opponent. Well, as Eddie said, it's going to be a war. It might not be too pretty, but we'll come back with starting lineups and St. Joe's against LaSalle in just a moment. Big Five Basketball on Sports Channel is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield, featuring the new personal choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. By your local Quality Plus Ford dealer. Remember, five of the ten best-selling cars and trucks in America are at your local Quality Plus Ford dealer. And by Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages, the Yellow Pages 9 out of 10 use, the genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages from Bell Atlantic. office favorites, blockbuster hits, acclaimed performances. It's a new year of great movies on Prism. In 1994, you'll see Mel Gibson in Forever Young, Miranda Richardson in Enchanted April, Denzel Washington in Malcolm X, Tom Berenger in the action-packed Sniper, Jean-Claude Van Damme in Nowhere to Run, and Richard Gere and Jodie Foster in Summersby. Call your cable company and order Prism today. Attention dudes and dudettes. The Phillies proudly present Whatever It Takes Dude, their official 93 video. Hosted by Harry Callis and the dude Lenny Dykstra, this video showcases the Phillies' come-from-behind victories, clubhouse humor, and a colorful collection of characters that made the 1993 season so unforgettable. 
Whatever it takes, dude, is 60 minutes of highlights, insights, and the never-say-die attitude of this dude-filled team. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, dude, takes you behind the scenes to meet all the dudes, to relive this year's Phillies fun and glorious moments. So let the celebrations go on forever with Whatever It Takes Dude. To order for $19.95 plus $4.95 shipping, use your credit card and call 1-800-688-1994. That's 1-800-688-1994. Hey, this is John Gurevich inviting you to join me here on Sports Channel for Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. It's the Sixers Monthly Television Magazine. As John Slobotkin, Tony Irving, and I take you inside the personalities and stories that develop as the NBA season unfolds. There's a new show about the middle of every month right through to a postseason edition in May. Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider, here on Sports Channel. Well, we are set for the 96th meeting between the Hawk and the Explorer for tonight's starting lineups. Let's go cross court to John McAdam. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Philadelphia Civic Center, home of the LaSalle University Explorers. This evening, LaSalle University presents the St. Joseph's University Hawks and the LaSalle University Explorers. Let's meet the starting lineups. First for St. Joseph's. At a forward position, a sophomore, six feet, seven inches tall from Saginaw, Michigan, number 42, Reggie Townsend. At the other forward, a freshman, six feet, seven inches tall from Moscow, Russia, number 55, Dmitry Domani. At the center spot, a senior, six feet, seven inches tall from Philadelphia, number 32, Carlin Worley. At the guards, a sophomore, five feet, nine inches tall from Trenton, New Jersey, number 10, Mark Bass. And at the other guard, a senior, six feet, three inches tall from Lansdowne, Pennsylvania, number 33, Rap Curry. The head coach of the St. Joseph's University Hawks in his fourth season is John Griffin. The assistant coaches, Phil Martelli, Jeff Arnold, and Matt Brady. And for the LaSalle University Explorers. At a forward position, a sophomore, six feet, six inches tall from Atlantic City, New Jersey, number 21, Romaine Haywood. At the other forward, a freshman, six feet, six inches tall from Hyattsville, Maryland, number 31, Derek Newton. At the center spot, a freshman six feet ten inches tall from Alkmaar, the Netherlands, number 50, Jasper Van Teesling. At the guards, a junior six feet three inches tall from Philadelphia, number 11, Kareem Towns. And at the other guard, a junior six feet one inch from Wincote, Pennsylvania, number 23, Paul Burke. The head coach of the LaSalle University Explorers in his eighth season is Bill Speedy Morris. The assistant coaches, Joe Mahalik, Joe Bryant, and Rich Prendergast. And there's the starting lineups. John Griffin has started nine different combinations in his 10 games, now the 11. They're 0 and 2 in the Atlantic 10. This, of course, a big five game, and the Bernards, Blunt, and Jones are unavailable. Speedy Morris, the all-time winningest coach in LaSalle University history. And they have been an up-and-down club coming off an overtime victory against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, shooting at 41%. And the matchups are kind of unusual. We want to see just what kind of defenses we're going to see. Maybe it'll be Bass and Towns as we check out the Ford starting lineups again. Nine different lineups for John Griffin and Derek Newton getting his eighth start. The other four have started every game. Interesting first couple of minutes here, Eddie. First, we'll share with you the officiating crew, John Bonder, Steve Olson, Steve Welmer. 
Larry, look for LaSalle to play a lot of zone defense. They're playing 2-3. Speedy not happy at all with their defense so far this year. He thinks that's hurting them. They'll play the 2-3 zone. St. Joe will have to try to attack it. Bass is in the lineup. He's not real healthy, but he's the outside shooter that Speedy Morris will look on to try to stop. He's got a pulled groin muscle, and he sat the bench the last couple of times out. At least did not start. Carlin Worley will jump center against Jasper Van Tiesling. LaSalle in their white trimmed in the blue and gold. The crimson and gray of the Hawks. And Carlin wins it cleanly to Rap Curry. The Hawks will work to our right. And zone defense it is. Damani in the corner for three. Dimitri Short, Worley, Worley misses. And Newton the rebound. But early, Carlin Worley with the offensive rebound. Paul Burke, the guard at 6-1, trying to block him out. No way. Haywood for three. Long and Townsend alone. Little Mark Bass, Damani in the corner. And Rat Curry. Cross court Damani, that's a two point shot. Short again in there. Same matchup, Burke to Towns. The pull up, the shake, the 14 footer. Forget the 35 second clock that will not be in jeopardy <laughs> at all tonight because both teams come down and they'll fire quickly. Kareem third in the country in points per ball game at 27.8. Behind a guy named Glenn Robinson that many people think will be one of the top three or four selections in the draft. Worley at the high, Townsend at the low, able to save it. The swing for Bass, right around Van Tiesling, fades and fires, uh-uh. Kept alive, Townsend, good pull. Left hand, nope. Worley, yep. Second chance points. St. Joe's, we showed on one of the panels, a plus seven rebounding margin against all their opponents. They love to bang the boards, and now without the Bernard, Jones, and Blunt out of the lineup, they still do an excellent job on the glass. A zone as well, set up as it's a box and one, and a steal by Townsend. Bass has Towns, the other four in a box. We'll check that next trip. Curry for a deep three. Long floorboard Paul Burke. He's got Towns left wing, Haywood right wing, goes left Towns. Around Curry, the lean pass, Haywood layup, and one. Romain Haywood. Well, the good look there by Kareem Towns going base baseline to find the sophomore. Haywood, there's an unselfish play. Last year as a freshman, he would have shot that ball off balance, but the good pass to Romain Haywood right there, the sophomore from Atlantic City High School, gets the shot, gets inside, and uses the glass and creates the body contact. Romain, a highly touted player, McDonald's All-American nominee at Atlantic City High School. At 6'6", sat the year for Prop 48 last year. Rounding in the form, gives his club a 5-2 lead. And I spoke to Lou Rowe at UMass and asked about Romaine. He said he's the real thing, and that's good enough for me if Lou Rowe said it. Entry pass, Worley. Drop step, triple team, late whistle, foul Van Tiesling. That's the matchup problems that LaSalle will have inside to Carl and Worley. Very impressive with St. Joe early in the game. Their shots against the zone. John Griffin has diagrammed some real nice play. They've got the corner jump shot. They're getting pretty much anything they want so far. So Speedy's right on the scouting report. His team's defense a little weak so far. Carlin, a 62% free throw shooter. You're almost tempted to pound it into Carlin almost every trip early. Van Tiesling has indeed been foul prone. St. Joe, a strange team from the free throw line. They either shoot extremely well or they're very poor, shooting 62% on the season, but some games only now 50%. And they had one game where they were 17 for 17. Haywood for three. Line drives it. Good box out, Townsend. And it's Rap Curry, met by Burke and Towns. High, low, Townsend. Telegraphs the pass, but Damani runs it down. Carlin wants the ball on Newton, doesn't get it. The South 3 2 matching up off it, and Damani free on the baseline. Here he comes, there he is. Good look. He's 0 for 3, but they've all been good shots. Excellent shots. He's wide open, he likes to keep firing it. There's a bad shot by Paul Burke, a quick shot. As Rab Curry had a hand in his face, and here's Rab with Paul right around him over Newton. Rab Curry. 
Little fast break there by the St. Joe Hawks. A good rebound by Carlin Worley. The head was up to see if anybody was ahead of the pack. Excellent outlet pass to the senior guard, Rap Curry. Again, looks like a box and one as little Mark Bass with Kareem Towns all over the floor. And a steal by Curry. Will slow it. Good look for Donati. Well, what they're saying to the LaSalle Explorer is we're going to try to take Kareem Towns out of the game with a man-to-man -man defense. Paul Burke, you're going to have to make good decisions, get other people in, and you're going to have to hit the outside jump shot. And on Speedy's side, what do you do? Do you play four on four, or do you try to do everything to get Kareem going? I think you got to get the ball Kareem a little bit. Now, Kareem can try to penetrate against Bass, but he must give it up if he doesn't have the shot. But That's there's 26 feet. <laughs> Newton's got a deep board. Do you ever shoot that far? I think you're kind saying 26 as Haywood knocks a three in from the corner. That was way past NBA range. My goodness. Two-point explorer lead. We played four plus. Damani baseline. Curry, good look, Townsend. Had a bounce pass, didn't use it, instead it's Bass. Now it's the high low the other way. Shot clock at eight. Curry, Carlin, look for Townsend. What unselfish but. It seemed that all five St. Joe Hawks handled the ball in that possession. Excellent movement. The 35 second clock running down, but plenty of time for Carl and Worley to make a nice pass to Reggie Townsend. Still the box and one. And Burke is open and will not shoot it. Go to Haywood. Up and under. No. Newton on the rebound. Newton on the layup. Newton getting some good minutes. Turquin Mott went to the bench for LaSalle as Newton, a freshman from Northwestern High School in Hydesville, Maryland. The math of country gets two. His first bucket, they double team out at the top. It's a 3-2. Damani's the guy free as he ranges baseline. Curry to Bass to Damani, who's open again. Back to Bass. Overload, far side, skip past Curry. One dribble, two dribble, to the air. 12-footer, Curry, he's got four. Rap Curry always does a good job with the dribble drive, and then right off the dribble will get that nice inside shot. Does not over-penetrate to possibly get the offensive foul, can stop inside the lane and knock it down. St. Joe's yet to turn the basketball over. Paul Burke, not the shot you might want. No, very quick shot. He's going to be open, but Speedy can't be happy with some of the selection right now. So the protocol for this one's been established. It's a 10-10 tie live at the Philadelphia Civic Center. To win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5 Lump Sum Jackpot, just match five of 39 numbers. Any five numbers you're attached to. Cash 5. All the cash, all at once. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5, we'll give you all the cash all at once. In one lump sum. All you have to do is pick it up. Cash 5. All the cash all at once. It's official. December 93. History repeats itself. Ford is again number one in cars, number one in trucks. It's Ford's best seller celebration at your Quality Plus Ford dealer with special savings on the number one car in America, the Ford Taurus. Now with dual airbag standard, available anti-lock brakes and front wheel drive. Taurus is perfect for winter driving. Plus, special package savings for this area only. Hurry, see your Quality Plus Ford dealer and be a part of the best seller celebration. Well, at 2.56 this afternoon, John Griffin working his club, showing him some post play. It's a full-time job, huh? Well, big game for John, five and five. Would like to get that sixth win going in, showing what he wants the big guys to post up against that zone defense of the Explorers. And at 2.56, our director, J.R. Aguilla, was shooting and helping put that together on this, his 35th birthday. A great way to celebrate with a doubleheader directing assignment. Best wishes to the newlywed. It's a 10-10 tie. Both clubs shooting right around 40%. Not much to choose in terms of rebounds either. John Griffin talking to young Reggie Townsend as Demetrius Poles checks in. 
Reggie Townsend did a nice job for John Griffin. The Hawks had a few rebounds in there in the first six minutes of this contest. Speedy's still looking quite dapper. You are really kind tonight. Jackets on, gorgeous tie. You know who dressed him tonight. Good job of breaking pressure without the ball hitting the floor. Through traffic for Worley. You gotta drive you nuts as a coach defensively that a zone that you can make a pass from the top of the key over 20 feet away, right down to two feet from the basket, right through five guys. You gotta have your hands up in the zone there. Van Tiesling has Haywood. Again for three, Romaine line drives it long. The floorboard to the floor general, Rap Curry. Crosses pass, a leaning three. He is drilled by the leaping Haywood. That's gonna be three free throws as Romaine got there a step late. Remember LaSalle is a young ball club. Romaine Haywood, a sophomore, but sat out last year due to Prop 48. That was not a wise foul. He did not have any chance of blocking Mark Bass's shot. Once he's up in the air, you gotta let the jump shooter alone. Bass's numbers, he's only shot 13 free throws. Has the first, he had a bad back when the year started. Then a groin pull, which cost him some minutes. And now he's got Kareem Towns. <laughs> the Hawks have as much problems as the Philadelphia Eagles had this year, losing Cunningham and people. I mean, John Griffin, you know, I don't sound like their public relations as you look at Bernard Blunt looking on their fine guard. Bernard Jones is somewhere around there also. I mean, you lose players like that, Bass is not healthy. Some teams would pack it in, but the Hawks come at you every night. And they hold a five-point lead as they've played really pristine basketball. No turnovers, very unselfish play, tremendous coaching. Haywood's got the same shot, and that's over the back. So if Burke and Haywood don't hit wide open shots, you can play boxing one all night long as Speedy goes to Quincy Lee. And coach, they're going to continue to play that box and one until they can, LaSalle can show John Griffin that they can make some outside jump shots. Haywood sits. Quincy Lee, a prolific high school scorer, is just a 23% shooter as a collegiate player. Here's Carlin and Curry breaking pressure on the pass. Foul zone a little bit farther out than they were earlier. Damani still open on the skip pass, has it, reverses it. Now Damani hits for the off corner. Inside Worley, up and under. Man size move. Easy buckets though for the Hawks. Ball movement excellent on the perimeter of the LaSalle defense. Gets it in the middle and just drives down the middle of the lane. And Turkwin Mott will come in. Van Teesling fade away, gets a good roll. Well, Jasper Van Teesling from Holland, the Netherlands. Achmar, nice two points. From Achmar, he says. God bless you. <laughs> Mod at the scorer's table to give a little bit more inside bulk. And as Eddie said, they've stretched it out nearly to half court. See, now Bass going through. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see corner shots from Bass. Good call. Misses. Holes to keep alive on the floor. Brad Curry. Carlin Worley a second chance, and it goes. Carlin pumps the fist. Well, what's happening now is the St. Joseph's Hawks are just out-muscling and out-hustling those Sal Explorers to lose balls. There's no room there for there's a long rebound. There's Carl Lloyd just going hard. La Salle people in white jerseys just standing around, and you see the red jersey of the Hawks going after the ball. And one thing about Carlin, you love to point this out. You get the hack on the way up, be strong enough to finish and wind up where he's got right now. Exactly, and that's what he does well this year. He's getting better at finishing off the play. Townsend just takes it out of Newton's hands and then gives it to Kareem Towns. 19-12 as you see it. And still Bass in the box and one following Kareem Towns. So Quincy Lee's got all day long. Rims out. Towns off his hands will go the other way. So the box and one, very efficient for John Griffin's club. They've built a seven-point lead and held Kareem Towns in check. Jimmy Connors is back, but he'll have to battle number one Pete Sampras, Jim Courier, Yvonne Lendl, and Michael Chang. 
it's the hottest tennis in town. The Comcast U.S. Indoor, February 14th through the 20th at the Spectrum. Call 1-800-995-BALL. 1-800-995-BALL. Another year ends and a new one begins, but the new prism rolls on with great movies like Forever Young with Mel Gibson, Malcolm X with Denzel Washington, and Summersby with Richard Gere and Jodie Foster. The most Flyers and Sixers games on TV. Great music programs like SRO and Live from Raptors. And exclusive special features like the Great Sports Debate and Prism Kids. Call your cable company and order the new Prism today. And welcome back. Here's that great, unselfish team defense, team offense for the Hawks. Keeping the ball in the perimeter, making the LaSalle defense move, and then right through the middle, the gut of the defense, Carlin Worley gets it and just slams it home. Here now, Carlin Worley winds up with the steal, and it's Carlin Worley who follows it up. Well, excellent anticipation. You saw his eyes right on the flight of the ball to see where the miss would come off and the anticipation to go up and grab the rebound at its height. There's the shooting percentage. Explorers at 6 of 15, while the Hawks are over 50%. And as you said, Eddie, stay in the box and one until you show me someone that's going to beat me. Well, LaSalle is getting good shots, but they're getting quick shots. I think a little bit more patience, maybe even a better shot, and move the basketball like the Hawks are moving it on the perimeter. And they go man-to-man -man right now. So it's Newton with Worley, Towns with Curry. So Carlin wants to go post him right on up. Isolate, Carlin's got to step outside to get it. To Townsend, who's back in. Rock Bass with Burke. I wonder if Towns can cover Rap Curry. He's going to just take him with strength. And wrap a frustration foul. I'm not wondering right now. <laughs> I mean, that was uh, very easy to go right by Kareem Towns right there. Look at Rap, just a little spin move right here. And I mean, now he just blows by him. He's behind him. Towns is really out of position right there. Rap Curry, the senior guard out of Penwood High School, Lansdale, Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania High School Player of the Year. Gets a free throw. And what a terrific player he's, he has been, anterior cruciate ligament surgery and all. Still wears the sleeve on the left knee, as you can see. But no brace. And it's a nine-point lead. And Mark Bass says, where are you, Kareem? Okay, buddy. Mark Bass giving a lot of inches, but he can deny the basketball. Very quick defender. Cross-court Quincy Lee. Reach in foul, Rap Curry. That'll be the second on the Hawks, the first on Rap. Now Towns is kind of looking like he wants to post up Mark Bass. It's a double stack. They isolate Mott with Townsend. Spins, fades away, and gets the hop. Well, they needed a nice roll there into the LaSalle Explorers. Turquin Mott gets his first two points. Fade away jumper. Not a great shot, but it goes down for the Explorers. They're down seven. Curry again spinning on Towns, breaking him down, breaking him down, laying him in. He's going to kill him. He's going to have to use a little bit of strength, Towns, to try to keep him off. Curry keeps that dribble hard and will just power his body into you. Big physical up top. Quincy Lee. With Damani, has a roll to Mott for 10. No, Curry. And that's a good opportunity for Sal. Five feet, six feet from the basket. Didn't realize he was that open. Townsend posted. Back to Curry. It's a two-man game to Townsend once more. Turns to the middle, goes off the heel, and right back to Mott. LaSalle down nine. Towns finally touches the ball and a bad pass. Damani reads the bounce pass that Mott did not. Now it's a full clear out for Curry who's bumped by Towns who's in foul trouble. And John Griffin's got everything he wants right now. 
Well, Speedy Morris, the head coach of those South Sports, had to make a decision. The zone defense was getting eaten alive. He went man to man. Now he tries to put Towns, the sophomore, on the senior Rap Curry, and there's just a mismatch because Towns is not a real good man to man defender, plus the big, strong Curry. He switched. Damani had him. We get a turnover on the other side of the floor, an illegal screen set by Reggie Townsend. Damani had Towns that trip, so Quincy Lee had Rap Curry, but before the play developed the offensive foul. That's good coaching by Speedy. He recognized early that he could not cover him and he doesn't want to get his star in foul trouble. Van Teesling in, Newton out. And on the left side of the floor, Kareem Towns looks over Mark Bass. Mott on the perimeter. Still a box and one, and Paul Burke has done very little offensively. Mott loses it, recovers, hesitates, and gets it in. Well, Turquin Mott, since he's come in off the bench, has four points. He's gotten good shots inside there. He makes two out of three. Cuts the lead to seven. So Quincy Lee's got Rap Curry, and Paul Burke has a steal. As he read the eyes of Mark Bass. Towns has open floor and is fouled by Damani on the reach around from behind. And with a transition off the steal right there for the LaSalle Explorers, that can get Towns in the offense. Good hands by Paul Burke, leads the team with steals. Head up, sees who's open, gets it to Towns. Towns is going to take it. He said, I've been playing this against box and one. I'm going to get a shot up here. The inbound of basketball. Speedy says he should have pulled up and shot the three. You don't want to get the third on a charge. Entry pass, Mott. And the foul on Worley. So Turkman Mott's been the answer. He's got six quick points. And his club's back within five. Well, Turquin Mod has struggled a little bit with decision making this year on some shot selection. Speedy put him in now as the sixth man. Maybe if he sees the game early from the bench, comes in and has done very well with the six point, doing better, shooting 49% from the field. And that's what LaSalle needed some inside offense, and they've gotten it so far from Mott. Makes the bottom end, so it's a four point ball game. Kevin Connor, number three, a 6'5 sophomore guard out of Richmond, Virginia, is in for Dimitri Damani. And Quincy Lee's got Curry, no one's got Worley, and a, really a save by Paul Burke, could have been a layup. Here's Paul Burke underneath to prevent the layup. Paul Burke doing a good job leading his man, knowing that he has to help out the quick hands to knock the ball out of bounds. Worley accepts on the perimeter and gives it to Bass. And a man from LaSalle. And now Kareem with the two fouls has Kevin Connor. Townsend in the paint. ABC drop step around and out. Loose ball, Mark Bass. Fresh caught. Van Teasling doing a nice job just keeping his feet, not going for the fake of Reggie Townsend. Good job there by the freshman. And a good jump switch by Van Teasling, but Curry exploits some misses. Worley, Worley, a man. Wow, Carlin Worley ripping it down. Ten points on the evening. He's noted for his rebound, leads the Atlantic 10 in rebounding, just rips it down. His fourth offensive rebound, Towns for three, no. And Lee over the back, knocks it out of bounds. And at the 7.36 mark, half number one, LaSalle is within six points of John Griffin, St. Joseph's Hawks. While the healthcare debate continues, Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield have the answers now. So lean on the blues for more benefit choices, like our traditional plan with complete freedom of choice, Keystone, America's fastest growing HMO, and our new personal choice, the economy of an HMO and the freedom of traditional coverage. Lean on us. Call 1-800-ASK-BLUE for information on the new personal choice from Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. For over 55 years, the health plan you can lean on. Fall is here. And winter is coming. It's time to get to your Subaru dealer's silver anniversary celebration. Ask yourself, when was the last time your family drove here? Or here. Then ask yourself, why pay well over $20,000 for a sport utility? When you can buy selected legacy all-wheel drive wagons for thousands less. And that's before up to $3,000 in year in savings. Subaru, America's best-selling import wagon for 11 years straight. With our rugged winter weather on the way. And up to $3,000 in savings. You can't wait another minute. Subaru, it just makes sense. 
All right, Andy, take us inside the box in one with Mark Bass all over Kareem Towns. Well, Mark Bass at five foot nine, Kareem Towns at six three, and the five nine <laughs> guy's doing a great job blocking out. Hold him, almost gets his head, leg over the head of Mark Bass, but that's a good job by Mark Bass, number ten of the Hawks, just blocking out and wrapping those arms around him. Kareem Towns has been quiet offensively. Towns one for two. Just has not been able to get involved. Speedy trying to take what this defense will give him. Which right now is Turkwin Mott. The problem for Speedy Mars and the Explorers is that on this end, defensively, they have not found the defense that can stop the St. Joe Hawks from getting excellent looks at the basket. Wilbur Johnson, number 34, has come in for the Hawks. There he is, 15 feet away. Bass. My goodness. And Burke throws it away. That was off the side of the basket. Surprised. And Paul Burke saved it. So apparently off the hands of Will Johnson. I think either Will Johnson or Carlin Worley did deflect that basketball a little bit. A bad move by Paul Burke to save it underneath his own basket like that. But he got away with one because I think a Hawk deflected it. John Griffin's not arguing. So I guess it's a good call by the official. Entry pass, Mott, faces on Johnson, takes it to him, and will go the other way. Turnover number six on LaSalle. And now Romain Haywood has come back in, and he will check Rap Curry in the man-to-man. -man. Mott follows Townsend outside. Burke with Bass. Carlin Worley on the bench right now, see where they go for their offense. Haywood might have a shot with Rap Curry. He could be more physical, but Rap's going to try to take him, break him down. Through the legs, three-pointer, blocked by Haywood, read by Towns, and he saves it to Burke, side court right. Crosses over to remain in the corner for three. Well, excellent defense on the one end for Romain Haywood, and now gets his ninth point on the evening, and he likes that corner jumper. It's a three-point ball game. Curry for three, Rat rattles it home. Good movement again by the Hawks. They're going to Rap Curry, he's got the feel. He's got 11, the lead is six inside six minutes. Paul Burke distance, front of the rim, good hustle, Mott, nope, and Will Johnson has it. Speedy wanted a foul on the putback, nothing called. Rap Curry, Rap Curry, entry pass, Townsend gets it back. Ball fake, 12 footer now, long. And an over-the-back foul will be called. We'll walk the length of the floor. Team foul number six. That was personal on Will Johnson. His first, Damani in, Connor out. You see him getting a pat from his coach. John Griffin going with eight players. The LaSalle Explorers have put seven in. John thinks his bench a little bit stronger than Speedy's down at LaSalle, rotating some players in the lineup. The screen is for Haywood, same spot, same results. Romaine is going to keep firing from that, his 12th point, another three. I'm sure when he gets back there, he'll keep practicing that jumper from the corner. 34% from three-point range on the season, so no surprise that he's firing. Damani with Paul Burke and off the ball, Will Johnson and Jasper Van Tiesling called on Johnson. Well, what has happened on the timeout since the LaSalle Explorers have come out, they've picked up the defense man-to-man -man and more tempo, harder man-to-man -man defense. Two possessions now for St. Joe. Fouls have gone the other way. Johnson out, Worley in, and Johnson shows some temper, throws the towel back toward the fans. And Van Tiesling getting a one-and-one -one as his club's over the limit. Played for the Netherlands in the Youth Olympics. Shooters touch. Assistant coach Joe Mahalik was saying before the game this evening that Jasper is only 18 years old, just turned 18. They're real happy with his progress. When they tell him to do something, he does it correctly. They think he has a bright future at LaSalle. 
And Joey's the one that went to the Netherlands to make the recruit. There's Joe Mihalik, the longtime assistant to Speedy Morris, and left the Urban before him. Wouldn't they let Speedy out of the country? No, Speedy doesn't have a passport. Worley drops, step, jump, oh my. That's new. That's not in the scouting report. Sal <laughs> says, Carlin, you're supposed to be inside. We know you're physical and you grab every rebound, but you don't have the jump hook. 12 points now for Worley. Paul Burke trying to break them on. He gets it to town. It's going off. No, it's not. It's mine. All right. <laughs> Towns, great pass from Kareem Towns. And Turquin Mott comes down and points, extends his arm, and says, thank you. Great pass. Towns' second assist. Only a 22 all year coming in. Curry spins on Haywood, gives to Damani over T Sling. Yep, Dimitri Damani. Dimitri Damani from Russia. A lot of international flavor here in the game tonight. Good catch and good kiss off the glass. We reach the four minute mark, backing him down as Towns. Yes, Kareem Towns. He's now got four in the ball game. It's a one point game and a high scoring first half. Worley, Mott's got a foul him as uh, Carlin knows to take it right to the rim when you get that kind of opening. Well, there should be no need for Mott to be that far out of position. Look at that far pass. I mean, that pass is 20 feet right there. Carlin Worley can post up that far, but the good catch, the good position goes up and tries to slam it. That's a good job by Worley to take everything hard, see if he can dunk everything and get fouled. Carlin, the leading scorer in Philadelphia schoolboy history, eclipsing his godfather, Wilt Chamberlain's numbers. Has a free throw. Kevin Connor back in. Remember when you... Uh, I wonder if he had to ask Wilt, could he do that? Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, I wouldn't do it unless Wilt said it was okay to do it. Well, we've got 3.47 remaining. The St. Joseph's Hawks playing pristine basketball only have themselves a three-point lead. Oh, man. Look what you did. Uh, what I did? Uh, just who do you think you are, man? Who do you think I think I am? Easy, fellas. What would he do? All the yellow pages? Just any yellow pages? Genuine yellow pages. Nine out of ten use it. Thank, Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. The genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages from Bell Atlantic. Flyers, the Sixers, the Big Five. The best home team sports lineup on TV this January on Prism. The Flyers skate in six games, including matchups against Wayne Gretzky's Kings and Brett Hull's Blues. The Sixers hit the hardwood nine times in a lineup featuring Shaquille O'Neal and the Magic and Patrick Ewing and the Knicks. And the Big Five rumbles at the Spectrum with a LaSalle Penn St. Joe's Temple doubleheader. Home team games you won't see anywhere else on TV this January on Prism. Don't miss any of the action. Call your cable company and order Prism today. Ed Stefanski, this took you and the St. Joe defense by surprise. Kareem with a bullet pass. Well, Kareem, when he has the ball like this, he normally wants to put it up. Only 22 assists on the season, but he can't get the handle here. Has the head up. You see that little glance in the look. Great look away pass. The defenders think he's going to shoot the ball. Good pass to his teammate, the sophomore, Turquin Mott, and Mott rams it home. Kareem has four points. But you know what with Green Towns? Last year, I think he would have been real frustrated and tried to force a lot of shots. Good point. And tonight, as a sophomore, another year experience right there. He's not getting his points or his shot opportunities, but he's making nice passes to his teammates. And his club's right in it as we come down the stretch in half number one. And it looks like St. Joe's is zoning up a straight 2-3. And Paul Burke looks over at Speedy. Van Tiesling high, low to Mott. Now that has to put a smile on Speedy Morris. Is an excellent high, low. Van Tiesling right down to his teammate Mott. Good high, low set there. 1-3-1 one, one, half court extended defense for LaSalle. Damani finds a seam and throws it away. Towns might have walked, but he dribbles away from it. Demetrius Poles has come in for St. Joseph's. Haywood does walk. And here's Mark Bass back in. And Dimitri Damani will sit. So we'll see if they go back box and one with Bass back on the floor. They really only can play the box with Bass. 
But what John Griffin probably feels with Phil Mortelli's assistant that they've gotten good shots against the box. Let's show him some, a different look. Jump stop fast, hands it off Townsend, who's hammered. And they'll call that on Romaine Haywood. Damani in, Connor out. They exchange the towel. And here's Reggie Townsend. Spills out on Reggie. Here's Bernard Bunt. We will be live in conversation at halftime with Bernard Blunt coming up at the half. Eddie and I will look back at the highlights, the scoring, and more. So please stay with us at halftime on Sports Channel Philadelphia. One out of two for Townsend. It's a two-point Hawk lead. It's a good one. It's an excellent game. It looked like St. Joe was going to hide a little bit in the first half against LaSalle. But LaSalle's come back. Good shots against this matchup. Bass and Towns, a lot of contact, no whistle. Out of bounds, we'll go the other way. St. Joe basketball, there's Mark Bass, who's dogging Kareem Towns, and Speedy's working him. Saying, how's that not a foul? Felt that Kareem Towns got hit on the arm. Well, there certainly has been a lot of body between Bass and Towns. LaSalle in its zone now, with Burke on the back line. Damani on the wing. Dimitri Damani, he's got seven points. Well, Damani's got a lot of good looks at the basket, gets his three-pointer. He's been getting a lot of corner jump shots against the defense of LaSalle. They try to post up Towns again, well short. And Demetrius Poles has a pull. Talking about Damani out of uh, Russia from Moscow, inner city player in Moscow, did spend a year at Maine Central Institute learning the language and learning the game. One of the best freshmen in the Atlantic 10 right now. Yeah, he's a polished player. He's really not a freshman. They've done a good job with him. He was good when he came over. Towns with two fouls, does not want to foul Curry, who gives it up to Poles. We'll find Curry again, and we've got a three-second violation. Well, the building's 80 years old. <laughs> First time you've seen that rule. I think this. I don't think I've seen a three-second call in the 15 or 20 games I've done so far this year. Well, every possession, Speedy's been working the official, asking for three seconds. So he got one. Reggie was in there a little too long. Burke on the curl to Towns, who passes to himself, and John Bonder's got the call on Mark Baz. So Speedy's worked him over. Well, Speedy says he's going to take advantage of that height. Six inches. Bass is giving up to Kareem Towns. Towns, good one-on-one -on -one player, can break you down, and right there he'll go to the line. Burke doing a good job giving the ball up. He's tapping it over, and right now he's just going to back himself in there, get set. He creates the foul by putting it, dipping his shoulder into Bass. Bass trying to keep his hand straight up, but watch Towns get the contact first. There's first, it comes up, pushes, and it's a good call by the officials. Two shots coming. Kareem Towns, a 79 percenter, makes the first. This is the second Damani the board. We roll toward the half. Quincy Lee checks Rap Curry at the top. Man-to-man -man defense, good switch Van Teesling. But no one kicks back up Townsend if you're going to switch, Eddie. Yeah, they're not matching up. People aren't calling out where people are going through on St. Joe's zone. they got to match up and know they have a, someone covering. Right now, two LaSalle Explorers on one Hawk, leaving someone open. Mott, corner Burke. Short, surprises everybody, and Mott runs it down. Tries to save it off to Monty, ill-advised. Curry with his head high. Crosses to Damani. Let's Towns fly by for three. No, Townsend. Shot clock is turned off, and Rap Curry's not going to waste it. St. Joe faithful appreciative of Rap's intellect on the floor. John Griffin calls the thumb up. Curry isolated on Lee. 
Lays it back for Damani. 16-footer Damani. Dimitri Damani. Has nine. And we reach the end of the first half, and it was a really good half of basketball on both sides. The wheels certainly spinning. And an eight-point lead. It's 42-34. The St. Joseph's Hawks on top, and we will come back with our halftime activities in just a moment. If you think you play like this, but you really play like this, you need help. You need Leslie Nielsen, star of the new home video, Bad Golf Made Easier. Billy, the reason the game is called golf is because all the other four-letter words have been taken. Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier teaches you the fundamentals. Always remember, the only really useful tip in golf is the one you give to the starter. Secrets the pros won't tell. Never use the comb in the blue fluid and how to play the problem lie. It's the smash hit home video. Call now to order. Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier. What is our credo? We don't play golf to feel bad. We, we play, play bad, bad golf but to feel, feel good. good. Call now to order Leslie Nielsen's Bad Golf Made Easier. Only $19.98. This video makes the perfect gift. Rush delivery available. Call 1-800-624-9889. We've changed our logo, we've changed our look, but the new prism is more than just another pretty face. It's concerts from Atlantic City and rising stars caught live in the rafters. It's Hollywood classics, the best of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and today's hottest superstars. It's a Sunday morning just for prism kids, and more flyers action for kids of all ages. It's all this and more. Call your cable company and find out what new really means. Order the new prism today. Hey, this is John Gervich, inviting you to join me here on Sports Channel for the January edition of Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. This month's theme is defense, as we take you inside the Sixers' defensive philosophy, let you get to know Dana Barros and his improved defense, and show you how defense is becoming the big trend around the NBA. This month's show premieres Saturday, January 15th at 10 p.m., right after Sports Channel's coverage of the Sixers at Cleveland. And welcome back to the Philadelphia Civic Center. A terrific half of inner city basketball. The St. Joseph's Hawks, an eight point lead over the LaSalle Explorers. Larry Rosen at halftime. Visiting with a guy, the last thing this guy wants to do is be sitting here talking to me at halftime. We're with Bernard Blunt, the All-American guard for the St. Joseph's Hawks, who lost his season on December the 1st with a patella tendon injury. First, let me make you play color commentator, Bernard. What do you think of the first half? Well, I think we're playing, uh, we played a great first half. I think we uh, got a few things on the offensive end that we don't usually get because they're playing a, a junk defense, some type of zone. Guys are uh, stepping up. And and uh, we're up by eight at halftime. How about Mark Bass boxing one on Kareem Towns? You gotta love that. Well, we, Mark's quick, you know, he's small, pretty strong, and hopefully he can give Kareem problems in the second half as he, as he did the uh, first half. All right, most importantly, of course, how's your health, recovery from the surgery? Walk us through the early stages of rehabilitation. Well, I had surgery the next day after uh, the injury, and I was out for about five and a half, six weeks, and I went for a checkup two days ago and um, the knee is healed fine it's really no problems you know I was really fortunate that I didn't mess up anything other than my the kneecap and uh, my doctors tell me I got like three weeks of rehabilitation before I could start actually um, practicing with the team and playing on my own you know so I'm looking f I'm actually a, a timetable I'm looking forward to uh, get back on the court in uh, middle of February you know just working on a practice and trying to help the guys you know salvaged uh, season. Have you seen the tape of the injury? Um, once or twice. I really can't look at it because every time I look at it, I just grab my knee, you know. So well, close your eyes because we're, we're going to show it again. This happened at Arizona on December the 1st and originally it looked like there was a lot of contact but he just you exploded up so strong. Now, don't look at this part, the close-up. That's where, oh, Bernard can we couldn't look either. I mean, I'm serious. The, the heart's all went out to you. The moment of the injury itself, 
Take us through that, because there wasn't any contact. You just went up so strong that the kneecap almost exploded. Well, I don't know if it was so much the pain I, f I felt as the, uh, what I saw. When I looked down at my leg, I initially thought it was a cramp, or I just thought I, you know, shock, you know, bang your knee, walk it off. When I looked down at it, my knee was all deformed, and, you know, I really can't describe it that well. It just everything was going through my head. It was like, was I going to play again, you know, my senior year, playing after college? It was just a lot of things going through my head, and, you know, I just didn't want to end there, you know. And right at that moment, I dedicated myself, do it to myself, actually, just to get back, you know, no matter what it was. So I was just fortunate that I was in good enough condition and good enough health at the time that I didn't mess up any ligaments or anything like that. Did they tell you, did the doctors try to explain to you how a kneecap blows out like that? Because it's so unusual. Well, the, he said it was unusual for me because I didn't do anything else right. other than my kneecap. He said uh, it was just, you know, the, I struck the ground at the, you know, with the right amount of force, you know, and power, and it was just a freak thing, you know. But if you want to do something to your knee, tell me this is what you want to do. Right, there's no ligament damage, no cartilage damage. Right. I mean, you should be, unlike Rapp, who's fought it for three years, right. and even Bernard Jones, who's had the multiple surgeries on the right. kneecaps, you should come back well, bigger and better. The, the leg will be stronger than it was before. So, you know, we'll see. I was, I'm starting, I can bend it now and everything at about 70 degrees. So, hopefully everything will be all right. You got the one crutch look going right now. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> you know. The, carrying two, I really don't need them, you know. I really don't need one. Only when I get tired, I need, you know, if I want to rest on something, so. Well, I know you hate it, but uh, we're thrilled to have you for another year. A red shirt senior, the veteran, you'll be back with us next year better than ever. Okay, thanks. Bernard Blunt, thanks for taking time to the second half. Be well. As Bernard Blunt, St. Joseph's Hawks, working on the kneecap, we'll come back with first half stats, highlights, analysis, and more right after this from the Civic Center. Healthcare debate continues. Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield have the answers now. So lean on the blues for more benefit choices, like our traditional plan with complete freedom of choice, Keystone, America's fastest growing HMO, and our new personal choice, the economy of an HMO and the freedom of traditional coverage. Lean on us. Call 1-800-ASK-BLUE for information on the new personal choice from Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. For over 55 years, the health plan you can lean on. It's official. December 93. History repeats itself. Ford is again number one in cars, number one in trucks. It's Ford's best seller celebration at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. With $1,200 package savings on America's most popular truck for 17 years straight, the Ford F-Series. Now with a driver's side airbag standard, plus air, stereo, automatic transmission, and a V8. Now that's affordable comfort. Hurry, see your Quality Plus Ford dealer and be a part of the best seller celebration. Inside Sports Magazine. If you're into sports, you already know the score. But for the real story, you've got to get inside. Only Inside Sports gives you the color, the commentary, the controversy, the consensus. Doug Collins and Bill Walton analyze the Shaq attack. Thomas Boswell proves why Barry Bonds is the best player alive. Bob Trumpy sizes up the road to the Super Bowl. You'll get 10 issues of Inside Sports, including our preseason preview editions. You'll also get our spectacular swimsuit issue. And with your paid subscription, a special bonus, eight issues of Basketball Digest. No real fan should be without it. Order your subscription now and save over 63% off the cover price. A total of 18 issues for three monthly payments of only $7.31 each. Get more than the score. Get the inside story. Get Inside Sports and Basketball Digest today. Call now, 1-800-841-4466. Welcome back to the Civic Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as the St. Joseph's Hawks hold a 42-34 lead over the LaSalle Explorers here in Big Five action. St. Joe took an early lead as good ball movement and the star players, their seniors, Rap Curry and Carlin Worley, led the scores. The LaSalle Explorers came back with the outside shooting of Turquin Mott. We have a good game. Stay with us as Larry and I will be back with highlights and more. Where can uninsured children get health care coverage? The Caring Foundation. Created three years ago by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield, the foundation provides free health care coverage for uninsured children. 
Now, as part of the state-funded CHIP of Pennsylvania program, the Caring Foundation can do more. Call 1-800-464-KIDS. The Caring Foundation. The answer for uninsured children. Flyers, the Sixers, the Big Five, the best home team sports lineup on TV this January on Prism. The Flyers skate in six games, including matchups against Wayne Gretzky's Kings and Brett Hull's Blues. The Sixers hit the hardwood nine times in a lineup featuring Shaquille O'Neal and the Magic and Patrick Ewing and the Knicks. And the Big Five rumbles at the spectrum with a LaSalle Penn St. Joe's Temple doubleheader. Home team games you won't see anywhere else on TV this January on Prism. Don't miss any of the action. Call your cable company and order Prism today. the chocolate so scrunchious and give your spirit that lift. Get the scrunchious feeling of a Nestle Crunch. When you win the pencil... St. Joe Hawks put 42 points on the board in the first half, have an eight-point lead at halftime over the LaSalle Explorers. Larry Rosen, Ed Stefanski with you here at the Civic Center on Sports Channel First. Good to see Bernard Blunt up and moving around. Life goes on. Oh, he, he's a fun kid. As I said to him before, every year I enjoy him more and more. He's maturing. Maybe I'm maturing, but <laughs> that clip, no. I can't watch that clip anymore either. I saw it once, and that's enough for me. Yeah, he covered his eyes when his, his knee kind of came through. So they're playing without the, their man, Bernard Blunt, of course, Bernard Jones. So they've got to get it from their seniors, and they are from Worley and Curry. As we go back and check out the key moments from half number one, Worley, the man on the inside, you knew that it was going to be a matchup problem. Well, there's a good penetration by Curry to let him go all the way down. Bad defense, but Carl and Worley, you better put a body on him as he just goes and rams it home. Meantime, on the outside, the other senior rap, Curry, knows his location on the floor and pulls up. Rap Curry does not over penetrate. He's good off the dribble with the shot and gets the nice roll here at the Civic Center. Carlin with 14, Rap with nine. Damani off the bench with nine. Reggie Townsend with five points. On the other side, they've taken Kareem Towns away, so it's been Mott and Haywood first great high low. Excellent, you can't diagram it any better. A freshman to the sophomore Mott, good play for the Explorers. And on the perimeter, Romain Haywood out of Atlantic City finally coming of age in Big Five basketball. Haywood doing a good job on both ends. Defensively there, he steps in, gets a nice roll to the hole, and boom. So LaSalle scoring. Haywood with 14, Mott 11, Towns 5, and Tiesling with four points. First half statistics, good shooting percentages, relatively speaking for both clubs, but the Hawks on the boards. They do it to every team, they out-rebound team by a seven margin. Tonight at halftime, they're up by nine rebounds. So that's the way the first half went. The second half is just two minutes away. Come back, won't you? Hey, this is John Gurevich inviting you to join me here on Sports Channel for Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. It's the Sixers monthly television magazine. As John Slobotkin, Tony Irving, and I take you inside the personalities and stories that develop as the NBA season unfolds. There's a new show about the middle of every month right through to a postseason edition in May. Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider here on Sports Channel. What looks best with a new look? How about a cavalcade of superstars like Dustin Hoffman, Gina Davis, and Andy Garcia in Hero? Wesley Snipes in Passenger 57? George Strait in Pure Country? Brad Pitt in Robert Redford's A River Runs Through It? Oscar winner Jeremy Irons in Waterland? 
Anthony Hopkins in Bram Stoker's Dracula, Kevin Costner in The Bodyguard, and Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven. For the best-looking movie lineup on cable TV, call your cable company and take a look at the new Prism today. Well, we just had special ceremonies at halftime, which the Hawks lead by eight. The all-time leading scorer in the women's program at LaSalle, Jen Cole, had her uniform number retired. It will hang proudly from the rafters here, along with Gola, Durrett, Brooks, and Simmons. There's Jen from Indiana. She brought her own pictures to savor the moment. She was an academic All-American working at, in Detroit, Michigan, a 3.9 student. And good to see her getting the recognition she deserves. And Ed Stefanski, if you're John Griffin, do you stay in that box and one that was successful in the first half? Well, I think John did a good job. They came out with the box and one, took Towns out of the game, but then Speedy Morris's explorers got better shots. Mott came in the lineup and got good shots. John came out of that defense, went into more of a zone, straight up zone defense. So I think he'll keep changing it around and see how LaSalle handles it. Paul Burke did not shoot the ball well in the first half. And that's what St. Joe wanted to see if Burke was going to make the jump shots. 0 for 5. All of them were three-point opportunities. And there's the one crutch look for Bernard Blanc, who at least gets his hand in. He says he's going to come back and at least work out with the guys by mid-February. And as bad as that looked on videotape, he's going to be 100% plus. He's saying, shoot the ball, Dimitri. I would. You know right you would. <laughs> He'd like to be shooting that corner jump uh -huh. shot that Dimitri is getting right now. In his corduroy pants and his sweater, he'll shoot the corner jumper. We are underway. And yes, we're underway with a box and one. Mark Bass has Kareem Town. So it's a little game on the opposite side. Mott Haywood. Newton at a high post sets a screen for Haywood. And a foul on Mark Bass climbing over the back of Kareem Towns. Well, what Speedy has said at halftime, I'm sure they went over when St. Joe will play the box and one defense, and they're going to try to post the taller, giving six inches Bass is for St. Joe giving away. They're going to try to post him up and maybe get him in foul trouble. He's got two now. Burke and Damani in the corner. Ball is scoreless. Haywood off iron. Damani high for the board. He wasn't square to the basket. Worley is thrown to the ground by Derek Newton. And Carlin just taking a blow. First on Newton in the second half. Here's the contact. This is a mismatch. The senior versus the freshman. And uh, Carlin Worley real big and showing a little acting there. Mm -hmm. Bass posted Townsend. Damani in the corner. Bass against the zone. Brings it out. They'll set the zone offense. Double high post. Screen away to set. And here comes Bass. Out of the corner. Stolen by Burke. Bass tries to foul him, but no whistle. So Burke's got a solo. Well, what the South did is they changed up into a straight man-to-man -man there. Burke doing a good job getting his hand in. The leading st steals for LaSalle and gets in there and gets a deuce. LaSalle straight man, following through. Bass, two-point shot around and out. Damani, a good board. Pretty complete player is Dimitri Damani. When you're playing man-to-man, -man, you got to get a body on someone. He just flew in wide open. Green Towns playing him, did not block out. Townsend, five-footer. Mott commits to the offhand. Reggie Towns at his seventh point on the evening, doing a good job for John Griffin inside. Derek Newton can't hurt you out there. Towns can. Carlin Worley with a board. Damani running the show with Towns out near midcourt. Picks up the dribble, and Towns tries to strip. Townsend give and go with Curry off his hands. Good look, though.
John Griffin calls 1-1 one, one on the defense. Which is a box and one, so Mott's open, 16 feet. Kirkwood Mott is doing a big job for LaSalle. His 13th point, showing a lot of offense and showing a good shot selection for the LaSalle Explorers. Not really forcing the shot. Townsend, 16 footer. Reggie Townsend with nine. Neither team playing much defense right now. <laughs> one pass and you're wide open. Let's see, there's one pass. Hawks playing straight man to man defense. Burke takes the baseline step. Rack Curry, good rebound from Haywood. Powers it out himself. Good look, Townsend. He's got 11 points. And you got to give Reggie Townsend, the sophomore at 6'7 from Saginaw, Michigan, running the floor at 6'7, getting down hard, and he got rewarded because the guard, in this case, Rap Curry had his head up and gave him the ball. Towns for three. Around and out, Damani, his third second half rebound. Well, St. Joe's starting the second half like he did the first half, looking to put LaSalle away. Townsend, who had 18 points against Rhode Island for a career high last time out, finds Worley and a foul on Newton down low. Here's the look. This is St. Joe's version of the high-low. Reggie Townsend making the nice entry pass by the bounce pass inside. Two guys on, Carl Worley looking for the foul, and he gets it. Van Teesling has come into the basketball game as Mott is seated. Now an 11 point lead as St. Joe stretches it out behind Carlin Worley. He's got 15. Got 16. And man to man as Damani meets Burke, who takes him to the left, gets contact, and the runner's good. Paul well, Burke has decided a couple of times at six foot one to take Damani at six seven. Interesting that Paul Burke thinks he can break him down one on one. Dragging the pivot foot is Raf Curry. Turnover number eight on the Hawk. It's been a pretty well played game, all things considered. Something weird's gonna happen in this game. Uh -huh. It always does when the two city teams get together. Towns, a lot of contact from Townsend. They're gonna call a push. See if it's uh, shots coming. You see Speedy Morris, Joe Mahalik, and I don't know if you get the other assistant coach. You can't miss him at 6'11 or 6'10. JB, Joe Bryant. And Jelly Bean's got a word for his low post players. We'll come back, a 10 point explorer deficit. To win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5 Lump Sum Jackpot, just match five of 39 numbers. Any five numbers you're attached to. Cash 5. All the cash, all at once. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash 5, we'll give you all the cash all at once. In one lump sum. All you have to do is pick it up. Cash 5. All the cash, all at once. It's official. December 93. History repeats itself. Ford is again number one in cars, number one in trucks. It's Ford's best seller celebration at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. With special savings on the number one car in America, the Ford Taurus. Now with dual airbag standard. Available anti-lock brakes and front wheel drive. Taurus is perfect for winter driving. Plus, special package savings for this area only. Hurry, see your Quality Plus Ford dealer and be a part of the best seller celebration. Let's check out the isolation of Bass guarding Kareem Towns. Mark Bass trying to keep a hand on where no Towns is at all time. Kareem trying to post up here. Good time to come off the screens, and that's what he's doing. Good shot there. Just can't get the roll, but that's good patience by Kareem Towns, not forcing the action. Hasn't gotten that many opportunities on the evening. Shoots nearly 23 times per basketball game, part of the... Uh, the offense that Speedy requires. Mark Bass has largely shut him down. Kareem only eight shot attempts through 25 minutes. LaSalle will inbound. And it's Burke 
and Damani the matchup. Knocked out of bounds, Carlin Worley. Haywoods and Newton to Burt. And he wants them from 15. And Paul Burke's heating up. Well, Paul Burke, as I said earlier, it's 6-1, taking it to the 6-7. Damani, you would think, with the height advantage, he couldn't get that jump shot off, but a good power dribble to get the defender off from Damani and pull up quickly. Curry in the paint. Hangs it short. Townsend, an offensive rebound. Townsend to Curry is fouled. And I believe that'll be on Van Teesling. The push on Townsend. Speedy Morris, the head coach explorer, is very upset about the rebounding that he said, get the rebound, White. And that means his team is not getting on the boards. Damani, good ball fit. Oh, a walk is called. And Damani gets a seat on the hardwood for his efforts. Damani had the layup, the quick shot. He showed the ball fake. He didn't really have to do it right up. He's either going to get fouled or get the two points. Paul Burke calls for the box set. The guards will come off. Burke takes Damani again off the side. Damani's got the rebound. Bass looks for the secondary break. Townsend in the corner. See Newton trying to cover Carl and Worley. They got to get the ball in the Carl and Worley. Carlin stepping out a little bit more. Ball screen for Curry. He's got a three. No good, Van Tiesling, good box. Still with South Basketball, Quincy Lee will come in. Kareem Towns will sit down next to Turpin Mott. Kareem averages 38 minutes per ball game, so this is just gonna be a little bit of a lecture. Or instructions, I guess. A little bit of both. <laughs> Burke comes off the screen. Haywood for three. And Damani is on the end line. They're going to call that a held ball or a dual Jump possession. Ball. Possession out of favor of St. Joe. Let's see why. And Teasley had the idea, just not quick enough. I have no clue. No, I don't know. <laughs> I think it was a good call. That's why. <laughs> That's why I called a jump ball. Good call. No foreign exchange between, uh, oh, Curry with the layup, nope. Townsend strip, gets it back. And the St. Joe faithful applaud, a 1-4 cross set. Carl oh, Worley just has to go low, work hard to get inside. He should take Newton inside. Let's see if John Griffin's gonna try to get the mismatch here. Bass penetrates on Burke's jump stop, six footer, front of the rim. Worley the tap, Worley the tap, no. They're gonna call Carlin. John Bonder authoritatively points at Carlin over the back. And he might be a tad frustrated, working hard, not getting the ball. And let's watch Carlin work. He's just pushing people around, using his body there. But he gets cold over the top. Newton has his body between him and the basket. Good job, Derek Newton. Freshman from Hyattsville, Maryland. It's an eight-point St. Joseph's lead as we move toward the halfway point, half number two. Larry Rose and Ed Stefanski with you at the Civic Center. Van Tiesling wants it. Burke gives it to him. Jasper jump hook. <laughs> All right, Jasper, I love it. I'm thinking what kind of movies he's going to make there. He's thinking about the move that he works on every day up at LaSalle. And the nice jump hook with the right hand. He's got six. The lead is six. Damani's got a clear out left side. Takes lead to his left and is fouled. Damani's got a real good first step. That's just the case of the defensive player in this case, Quincy Lee, not moving his feet as Air Speed say. He's not moving his feet. He's just backing off and going to hack him with his arms. You've got to play defense, moving your feet. You have to be on the balls of your feet and be ready to slide. Rap Carey has been quieted somewhat by Romaine Haywood. And a long bounce pass anticipated by Quincy Lee. As Van Tiesling opposite side goes to Lee. 14-foot leaner, blocked Damani, foul Damani. And Quincy Lee will go to the free throw line. Well, Paul Burke is taking it right to Damani, the freshman. This time, Quincy Lee, 
goes right towards Damani, right in his face, and there's your foul. And Damani will go out for Kevin Connor. Demetrius Poles is in for Reggie Townsend. And for LaSalle, Mott, you see, is back. Along with Kareem Towns. There's Kareem. Quincy Lee, all-time leading scorer in Burlington County history, has had a tough time getting going on the college level. He's even been under 50% as a free throw shooter. That's his first point. Well, with the makeup of the South Explorers this year, he's going to get a lot of quality minutes for Speedy Morris. He goes in and just plays good defense for him. Held ball between Mott and Curry favors LaSalle. Well, let's see what defense the Hawks are. Are they still in the zone, or is it a straight man-to-man? -man? Straight man-to-man -man now. Coming across with him. Entry pass Mott. Once Demetrius Poles. And one as Mott will go to the free throw line. Well, Turquin Mott has thoroughly impressed me this evening. He's had a couple games where I think he's made real bad decision shots. Right there, did not force it. Got, knew he had the pressure from Pauls and got the foul. We've got a timeout on the floor at the 12.51 mark. St. Joseph still holding a five-point lead. Jimmy Connors is back but he'll have to battle number one Pete Sampras, Jim Courier, Yvonne Lendl, and Michael Chang. It's the hottest tennis in town. The Comcast U.S. Indoor, February 14th through the 20th at the Spectrum. Call 1-800-995-BALL. 1-800-995-BALL. Another year ends and a new one begins, but the new prism rolls on with great movies like Forever Young with Mel Gibson, Malcolm X with Denzel Washington, and Summersby with Richard Gere and Jodie Foster. The most flyers and Sixers games on TV. Great music programs like SRO and Live from Raptors. And exclusive special features like The Great Sports Debate and Prism Kids. Call your cable company and order the new prism today. We'll be right back at you at the Civic Center next Thursday, January 20th. Eddie and I will have Game 2, LaSalle against Temple, after Harry Paredes, Villanova Wildcats, see Julie Serrero's Pennsylvania Quakers in Game 1. LaSalle and Temple, contrasting styles there. And there's the uh, pride of Roman Catholic High School. To the right is St. Joseph's head coach, John Griffin, with Speedy Morris in the middle. I'm thinking who that guard is, too, on the other side. I can't think. I'll have to find out. Speedy looks the same as he looked those 20-some years ago. John, however, has aged dramatically. Yeah. <laughs> John's let himself go, and Speedy keeps you know, himself in shape. That Wall Street lifestyle will get to yeah. you. Yeah, Speedy's on that Stepmaster every morning, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Walking up and down his own step. He's uh, still got the jacket on, the tie almost all the way up. But his pupil has a two-to-one advantage. Mott gets one out of two. It's a four-point basketball game. Kerry, Worley, Holes, Bass, and Connor for John Griffin right now. Connor the penetration. Kevin Connor taking it all the way from the top of the key right through the man-to-man -man defense. No help by the LaSalle Explorers, and he gets his first two points. And Burke looks at Connors. That's a better matchup. Towns has an open three, rims out. The floorboard to Poles. The break right is Curry. Has Bass in the corner for three, Mark Bass. Nope. Mott, weak side rebound. Here's a fast break. Towns lay it off Van Tiesling. That's three assists for Green Town. And I thought it might be a bad decision for him to hand it off to the 6'10 freshman as opposed to taking it himself, but he left a real nice soft bounce pass for the 6'10 guy to grab easily. He's got 10 points, does Jasper. And Paul Burke catches an elbow in the eyeball from Mark Bass. John Bonner's looking at it with him. Checking his teeth, there's the elbow. 
Kaboom. Kaboom. Got him on the nose. He grazed him with the left and then drilled him with the right. Not a bad idea for Bass to do that, though. Because, because when the defender is going to get that close to you and get up tight, you have to have room. You have to have some movement there. And the next time, maybe Paul Burke will think about getting that tight. I mean, you have to defend your space in your area there. Not doing it intentionally. But if you're going to put your face that close to him, you may get an elbow there. And he is bleeding, so he's going to go to the very end of the bench and get checked over. That, yep, you see the blood coming out the nose. That might be a more prominent proboscis for Paul Burke. And his girlfriend, assistant basketball coach on the women's side, Jen McGowan, is quite concerned as the ice pack is on and play is as well. Do we give you everything, folks, or there what? I mean, Larry Rosen even knows who the girlfriends are. Steve Frommel is tripped by Kevin Connor, and John Griffin is apoplectic at that one. That's a shame that Paul Burke is seated at the bench with his face buried in an ice pack at the very end of the bench. And Steve Frommel comes in. It's a somewhat familiar name to LaSalle fans, Eddie. Son of Kurt Frommel. Excellent player for the LaSalle. Played from 61 to 65. And he's also and it was an Explorer's assistant coach under Tom Gall in that 68-70 great teams. But what a tough spot for the freshman to walk into. And now we've got oh, an ankle for Carlin Worley. And he's going to walk that off. It's getting a little hairy out here now. Here's Carlin, who just landed oh, yeah, on Rapp's, Rapp's foot. Right. Yeah. Thank God he just got up. We can't take any more Hawks going down this year. No, they've, they're over the limit. Yeah. That's nice. Mott shakes hands with Carlin. And Rapp Curry's got Quincy Lee. Mark Bass with Steve Frommel. Connor, another slashing move. Just did it from the opposite side. The one side coming in the right, now he came from the left. Well, Paul Burke's got a towel covered with blood now in his lap, and I hope his evening's not over. Mott looks at Poles, now takes it. Turquin Mott. The patience of Turquin Mott to gather himself in, get the defender off a step, and knock it home for 16. Poles, he's left-handed, takes it to a strong hand, and a foul, Demetrius, who raises his arms triumphantly. Well, Demetrius Poles was not going to be denied. The 6'8 junior from Glassboro, New Jersey, gets it inside the bounce pass, turns, dips his shoulder in there between two defenders of LaSalle, gets the roll here at the Civic Center. Yeah. First bucket for Demetrius. Out of Delcy Regional High School, the South Jersey Player of the Year a couple of years ago. Kevin Connor, an offensive rebound. So a six point lead in the ball. Curry for three. Well off. And Kareem Towns gonna have to go it alone. Leaning 14 footer, never got himself set, gets his own board. Connors breaks it loose. And Poles pulls it down. Connor with some quality second half minutes. And Rapp says, give me the ball. <laughs> go to his side. We're going to go to his side. side. Let's see if he's going to drive by his defender again. Curry penetrates and dishes to Connor. Quick pass pass. Around Frommel. Gets a layup. Well, what the St. Joe Hawks are doing now, and it's a good job by John Griffin, is that they're moving them out side, and they're spreading the floor and trying to go one-on-one -on -one down the lane there. A little bit of a weave. Remain Haywood back at the scorer's table. Towns got it. She rises alone. He's now three for nine from the floor, seven points. Carlin short. Quincy's got the rebound. Steve Frommel, the crossover, leads the break. Quincy Lee. Pretty inexperienced backcourt right now, minus Towns. And Bass, look at the hustle from little Mark Bass. <laughs> Substitution, Haywood in, Lee out, Townsend in, pulls out, and here's Bass doing what he does best, 
Bass doing a good job denying the ball and then trying to save it before it goes out. Steve Frommel under the chin the play. Towns comes off and looks for Van Teesling. Towns for three, no. And Connor's got a two on one with Bass. He'll do it himself. Kevin Connor got into three layups now, six points in the evening, but the good ball fake to Frommel to say, I'm going to my teammate and just laying it in himself. And Speedy Mars needs a timeout. He's down by eight. He's lost the equilibrium on the floor. He's lost his point guard. We'll come back to the Civic Center in a moment. While the healthcare debate continues, Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield have the answers now. So lean on the blues for more benefit choices, like our traditional plan with complete freedom of choice, Keystone, America's fastest growing HMO, and our new personal choice, the economy of an HMO and the freedom of traditional coverage. Lean on us. Call 1-800-ASK-BLUE for information on the new personal choice from Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield. For over 55 years, the health plan you can lean on. Fall is here. And winter is coming. It's time to get to your Subaru dealer's silver anniversary celebration. Ask yourself, when was the last time your family drove here? Or here. Then ask yourself, why pay well over $20,000 for a sport utility? When you can buy selected legacy all-wheel drive wagons for thousands less. And that's before up to $3,000 in year in savings. Subaru, America's best-selling import wagon for 11 years straight. With our rugged winter weather on the way. And up to $3,000 in savings. You can't wait another minute. Subaru, it just makes sense. Welcome back. Kevin Connors has been the revelation off the bench for John Griffin, Ed Stefanski. Doing an excellent job as he's caught himself offensively driving to the basket. They're clearing out. They're going trying to get open that floor, do a little one-on-one, -on -one, and he just blows by Kareem Towns for the layup. And here in the open floor, what a long rebound. Connor does a good job. Frommel shows the ball and goes in for a deuce. And now Paul Burke goes back to the scorer's table wearing a new jersey, number 35. And with the... Uh, as he turns around, you'll see the plug. This is what the, the team doctor did to him. Plug the nose. And he's at the scorer's table. Will not come in right now. But he's at the table. This is not the WWF. This is the real thing. That's real blood. Typical Big Five game. Frommel trying to keep his club afloat. Haywood airballs it. Connor's got a floorboard. Wrapped across to Damani. Frommel stuck with Townsend. Now they jump switch back. Carlin Worthy wants the basketball. Thumbs up, it's a double high set, four across, and here's the ball screen for Curry. Spins away from it. Gives to Connor, the slash again, the layup. Left-handed Kevin Connor. Well, Kevin Connor's come in. That's four layups for him off a good drive to the basket. He only averages three and a half points a game. He's doubled it. Towns has to fly to get Newton's pass. And a baseline bump on Bass. It's a 10-point ball game right now. And Paul Burke will come in, broken nose and all. We think broken nose. Steve Fromm with some applause for the faithful. So if Burke's in, Bass will follow for Kevin Connor. What a great job Kevin Connor did. He gets a little hand from the head coach, John Griffin. Jeffrey Arnold, a great St. Joe guard, down assistant coach, give him a little pat on the back. A 10-4 hawk run during the three and a half minutes that Paul Burke sat, and Towns misses. But Townsend gives it back to him. Paul Burke to remain Haywood for three, off iron. And who's got the board? The man, Carlin Worley, chairman of the boards. Well said. Curry right around Haywood. Curry to the baseline, to the cutting Damani, who's fouled. Call the foul on Paul Burke, now number 35. Here's the good crossing pass. Grab Curry on his offhand, the left hand, the good bounce pass baseline, the catch by Damani, and there's your foul. And Dimitri, the free throw line. 
an 11 point lead. Dump it down, relocate. Damani working toward that career high hits another free throw. Has 11. And Speedy's going to take a timeout. His club is down by 12. Looking for some offensive answers against the very difficult St. Joseph's Hawks. We'll be back to the Civic Center in a moment. Oh, man. Look what you did. Uh, what I did? Uh, just who do you think you are, man? Who do you think I think I am? Easy, fellas. What would he do? All the yellow pages? Just any yellow pages? Genuine yellow pages. Nine out of ten use it. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank, thank you very much. much. The genuine Bell of Pennsylvania yellow pages from Bell Atlantic. Flyers, the Sixers, the Big Five. The best home team sports lineup on TV this January on Prism. The Flyers skate in six games, including matchups against Wayne Gretzky's Kings and Brett Hull's Blues. The Sixers hit the hardwood nine times in a lineup featuring Shaquille O'Neal and the Magic and Patrick Ewing and the Knicks. And the Big Five rumbles at the Spectrum with a LaSalle Penn St. Joe's Temple doubleheader. Home team games you won't see anywhere else on TV this January on Prism. Don't miss any of the action. Call your cable company and order Prism today. It's never too early to think baseball. Just three days after the Penn Princeton game <laughs> on Sports Channel, we'll have Phillies spring training. Five games begin March the 5th against the Toronto Blue Jays. It will end at Camden Yards on April 2nd. But thankfully, an awful lot more basketball to see first, including Kevin Connor, who shows us a great left hand right here. Well, Kevin Connor's giving a lot of quality minutes for John Griffin there. He ducks under Turcon Mott to get the left hand right in, and the sophomore from Richmond, Virginia, doing the job this evening as he'll take a seat on the bench. Has a season high. Had 10 against Wagner, rather. And eight tonight from the spectrum, the Philadelphia 76ers extend their little winning streak, defeating LaSalle alumnus Randy Woods and the L.A. Clippers, 117-98. I'm impressed. Sixers used to Fred play Carter's here. doing a good job. Hey, they are now a half game out of a playoff berth if the season were to end. Now the question is where they're going to play next year. <laughs> Derek Newton has been silent offensively and throws it away. Brad Perry's got it. Head up. Drop pass to Monty. Too far under. Bass. Bounces to Carlin. Reverses. Is hammered across both arms by Romaine Haywood. St. Joe getting a lot of easy opportunities right now, but I'm was kidding you about where the uh, Sixers are going to play next year with their problem. When I guarantee you if Harold Katz is home tonight, He's got us right now. He <laughs> loves college hoops. He watches them. He has that satellite dish in every game. He watches our telecast. Well, he was not a happy camper this afternoon at his press conference. He believed that uh, Governor-elect Chris Todd Whitman made a mistake in saying that she could not support the deal that he had put together with the outgoing governor, Jim Florio. And where it goes next is anyone's guess. Worley makes it a 13-point lead. And Paul Burke calls the box. They've been stalled offensively. Burke to Lee. Wide open. That's a good bucket for LaSalle. He definitely had to get some offense. Now down 11 with 6.44 to go. Lee with three. And they show some half-court trap. Over the top, Damani accepts. St. Joe should spread the floor out. LaSalle has to trap and run, make him run a longer distance and try to get someone open. He'll have Damani in the corner. And there he is, Dimitri all day long. Too long, and Newton has a floorboard. Griffin wants straight man to man now. Ma accepts. Good pass, Paul Burke. Paul Burke doing a good job. He saw him set up. He was just waiting for Ma to get in position to get his 18th point, the catch and the layup. And timeout, John Griffin. So the wheels still spin with 6.04 remaining. St. Joseph's has led virtually starting to finish. The lead is nine points.
Hey, this is John Gurevich inviting you to join me here on Sports Channel for Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. It's the Sixers monthly television magazine. As John Slovakian, Tony Irving and I take you inside the personalities and stories that develop as the NBA season unfolds. There's a new show about the middle of every month right through to a postseason edition in May. Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider here on Sports Channel. What looks best with a new look? How about a cavalcade of superstars like Dustin Hoffman, Gina Davis, and Andy Garcia in Hero? Wesley Snipes in Passenger 57. George Strait in Pure Country. Brad Pitt in Robert Redford's A River Runs Through It. Oscar winner Jeremy Irons in Waterland. Anthony Hopkins in Bram Stoker's Dracula. Kevin Costner in The Bodyguard. And Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven. For the best looking movie lineup on cable TV, call your cable company and take a look at the new Prism today. Well, Eddie, good court vision and communication, Paul Burke. This is an excellent play by a point guard. You see his eyes are up. He sees Mott has beaten the St. Joe defense down the floor behind him. It takes two players, one to make the nice pass, and now Mott will have the catch. So he's seen him. He throws it. Here's the catch, the layup soft off the glass. And John Griffin, a good timeout as we check out Paul Burke. And Turkland Mott. Paul still feeling for that, uh, that nostril. Took a nasty accidental elbow from Mark Bass. Trap. Travel. Damani. And the Explorers really have to turn it up defensively. And they get the turnover there. Kareem to... Excuse me, you'll get the crowd in the game if this one goes down. It's Towns. Quincy Lee, the follow. It's a seven-point game and a five-point run. Lee with five. Harlan breaks it himself to Rap Curry. High post Worley, kicks to the corner. Good ball swing. And Curry backs out. Steal by Towns, retaken by Curry. He just bodied him off the ball. Damani to Bass. Shot clock never reset, so they got to put it up. It's Damani on the front of the iron. Worley saves it off Mott. What a play, Carlin Worley, who's in the second row. Good hustle here by Carlin Worley. It's 6 7. The big man keeps going, will hustle. Now Turquin Mott is right there and it's going to be out on Turquin Mott. Good hustle by Carlin Worley, St. Joe's possession. And the inbound to midcourt with a fresh clock. Carlin always comes to play, especially in these inner city games. The Sal 2 3 straight off the out of bounds. Baseline Townsend. No. Townsend says, look what I found, a five-footer. Offensive rebounds just killing LaSalle all evening long. Got a hand on it, but could not bring it down. He's in double figures as Townsend. Mott takes Townsend outside. Quincy Lee. Paul Burke has to work hard just to handle. Finds. Newton, foul by Worley. Good recognition by Burke that he did not have the shot and an excellent catch and move by Newton, the freshman. There's your recognition, the inside, good bounce, good hard move to the hole and gets fouled by Carlin Worley. Fourth foul on Carlin Worley. So there's a developing storyline late. Nine point lead, Carlin stays on the floor. Newton makes the first. Yeah, LaSalle down eight, has to make every three throw. 4.17 left. That pressure has hurt St. Joe a little bit in the half court traps. They've gotten their hands on it, LaSalle scores. In and out. And trapping pressure, one, two, one, one. On the back line is Mott. Helps to have a big man that can help you. And Carlin Worley breaks it. And then goes to the high post and the entry for Townsend. 
What's so good is Carl Worley at 6'7 can see over the zone and he's a good passer. Rap Curry. He's got 13. And quickly it's back up to 10. No surprise, the seniors for St. Joe stepping up their game in crunch time. Quincy Lee short, Mott. Got it. 20 points for Turklin Mott in one of his best games as an explorer. Damani takes the cross court back to Worley. And they intellectually sound, they bring it back out. And run some clock as we roll toward the three minute mark. Curry for three off the front of the rim. And that caught a hand to Damani. Will walk the other way, LaSalle basketball. Down eight with the ball. And do you force Kareem Towns into it here? I think they've been running good offense, but it may not be a bad time if you can get off a three to him, or he's going to go in and post, try to post. Here he comes off the screen, a tough look for Lee, who runs it down and takes the three. Quincy Lee. Well, they almost threw the ball away there, the LaSalle Explorers, and then they get on a three-point opportunity and make it and cut the lead to five with 241. And Lee's got eight points. They trap Curry, he recognizes. It's Mark Bass. St. Joe still has to attack. They can't just try to put the ball away and hold that 35 second clock down. They must attack. Worley, 15 feet. One dribble is fouled by Burke from the weak side. St. Joe doing a good job powering it inside. They're trying to get in a high-low situation here with Carl and Worley. Right there, Worley sees they can feel there's no pressure. Mott way off him. Mott's got to be up there a little bit higher. And that's 18 fouls. Here's with the Hawks. They're either real good or <laughs> real bad on the free throw line. He's got two shots coming. Speedy Morris down six to his former pupil and student and player, John Griffin. Largely on the efforts of that young man, Carlin Morley, who's two for two. He's got 19. And Burke goes right around Damani, gets some clearance in and out. Off Derek Newton, will go the other way with 2.13 remaining. Good call there. Yeah, and a good shot. Burke got way into the lane. Damani fell back on him, had to roll, just didn't get it. Again, they use the senior center, Carlin Worley, to break pressure. And then he goes to the high post and accepts. Low look pass for Townsend. Out of bounds, turnover. See, Carlin just had his mindset that he was going to throw a pass from the high post to the low post. Right there, he could have brought it back out and run the offense or look for his own shot. He just had predetermined what he was going to do. Down seven with the ball. And win, lose, or draw, you're, you've taken Kareem Towns out of the basketball game largely. If you don't hit him early, it's tough to be a hero late. Mott, who's hit him all night long for two more, short, he'll go to the line. Kirkland Mott again working hard on Reggie Townsend to get him on his back. Caught the ball, thought of what he was going to do, nice little drop step, and got the foul. Larry, when we have time here, we'd like to send our condolences out to Joe Oaks, the last of the Mighty Mites who passed away this week. Great guy, who did a good job of refereeing CYO, coach at St. Joe Prep, just a wonderful guy. And Matty Guka Sr. passed away a couple weeks ago. And the last of the Mighty Mites, Joe Oaks, and uh, we wish his family well. Absolutely. He would in Newton now. The Mighty Mites, of course, a legendary St. Joseph's team from the late 30s. Two shots, who have long been a part of the folklore of Philadelphia college basketball. Mott ties his career high as we check out the LaSalle bench. Here's Joe Bryant, Joe Mihalik, Speedy Morris. And a new career high for Turkland Mott. He's got 22 points. It's a five-point ball game. And a good job to break pressure without the dribble. Well, they can play him straight up here, can't they? Yeah, they have to play him straight up. I don't think they have to foul right away. 
straight man-to-man, -man, though. They're going to try to match up in a man-to-man -man situation. Bass for three. That's way long. Townsend runs it down and throws it away. Towns, Curry holds him. They won't score the basket. They're going to give him an intentional foul, though. This wow. will be an intentional foul. That's even better. Yeah. Rap made a bad decision right there. The offensive rebounds have been killing LaSalle all night, but they got away with one there as Reggie Townsend made a bad pass, Cream Towns. Now right here, you see Rapp's really not going for the ball well there. He's got to cut in front of him if he's going to stop it. But even then, it wasn't a good foul because he was going to score and get a three-point opportunity right there. Looks like kind of Rapp said, well, I'm not going to foul him. It's yeah. only two points. Well, I better foul. Either yeah. decision was not the wise one. Either let him go or foul him hard yeah. going for the ball so he can't get the three-point opportunity. Well, these are critical. There's 74 ticks remaining. LaSalle will get the basketball back. Towns misses. He hasn't had the touches all night. That just kills you on the three throw line. He's a 79 percenter. Yeah. Well, this would cut the lead to four. It does, and LaSalle has the basketball. A quick word from Speedy for Kareem. And the Explorers are very fortunate to be able to be taking it down to the final minute. Burke in a key trip. Takes Damani to the lane. Lays it off for Lee. Quincy, no. Turkwin Mott. And the foul of Turkwin will go to the line. Well, Turkwin Mott may have come of age. <laughs> He's a sophomore, and he plays a lot of minutes for the Sal Explorers. He's an up-and-down type player. He's made some bad decisions early in the season, but tonight he's played an all-around game, and right there, gathering himself in, he has not been frustrated, has made good decisions, and he'll go to the line and try to cut the lead to one. Gets the roll. He's got 25 points. We've got a one-point ball game and one minute remaining. Worley to Curry to break the 10 second line. Nearly a throw away. Worley brings it back out. Worley is fouled by Kareem Towns. Wow. A lackadaisical pass by Rap Curry. Almost stolen. But now Carlin Worley will go to the line and he shoots at a 62% clip from the three throw line. He's been good down the stretch. Poles in for defense. Townsend out. And St. Joe has had this game of most of All the, the game. <laughs> Go down to the stretch. 45.9 left on your clock. This is still a one and one. It's the ninth foul. In and out. Burke with the basketball. There's your time. There's your score. The South can maybe steal it. Mott faces on poles. Is foul. Doesn't get a roll. But Turklin Mock, in his finest game as a college player, can give LaSalle the lead. Well, Kareem Towns been out of the game because of the box of one and good defense by Mark Bass. He has not forced anything. They're going to Mott. Mott has the hot hand. Pauls falls down, a little bit of a block there. And he'll go to the line for two. How does Mott shoot the free throws? How about 51? <laughs> Offense, defense again. Townsend in, pulls out. This is two-shot foul. They all are the rest of the way. 36.2 on your clock, 35, so a one-second differential. No good. He is five for seven for the free throw line. And this is huge. We've got a tie basketball game. Now you're holding for one, coach? 71 all. I think I'd hold for one or a good shot. They're having problems getting the ball to court. Curry does it himself. Rather, it's Worley to Curry. They get it over just in the nick of time. Shot clock is still on. There's a 1.9 second differential. And John Griffin says, let's uh, set this one up. 71-71, an unlikely scenario has unfolded on this one. Well, the half-court trap has really hurt the, the St. Joe Hawks late in the ballgame. Speedy Mars didn't want to go to it, but he had to, and they have had problems. 
nearly an over and back, nearly a 10 second call. Here's the way it rolled. It was 36, we said on the, 36 seconds was the time. Now is that 10 seconds? Yeah, there was 24 on the shot clock. Here's John Griffin designing. Up, Almost yeah, a 10 second violation screen. there. Durant wrapped her off. Okay? If not, Mark Bass, step back to the ball. Whoever gets the ball, Bass or Curry. Okay? It's Bass, Curry, Woolley. Okay? You Here's Speedy on the defense. <laughs> I love it. Why not? Give it to the senior rap Curry. You got to believe LaSalle is going to go into a man to man defense. Most teams with 19 seconds, I don't think Speedy's going to stay in the zone and give them a shot somewhere. So let's see if they're in a man to man. He's finally diagrammed and said, hey, rap, take, take, take the ball. I love that. And Rap Curry's got Quincy Lee, wears 33, and he comes back to the basketball. That's a good move. They've got to help Rap. Rap's going to get a shot off. He's too big up top. We'll count it down together. All the coaching in the world doesn't matter. Rap wants to work the right side. No. Rebound. No. Rap Curry. Goaltending. They're going to score the basket, and the game is over. LaSalle loses on a goaltend. Let's see, and I kind of believe it was goaltending. I have to look at it. I think it was in the hole. Offensive rebound and killed LaSalle all night long, and we'll see the replay here, but I think it was a good call without seeing it. Yeah, to the naked eye, it was clearly a goaltend. But this is the one-on-one -on -one move. Good defense by Quincy Lee. Straight up, doesn't foul him, but here's where they can't get the rebound. Yeah, no question, that's a goaltend. Everybody wants to know is a goaltend. We're not going to tell by that angle. But I'll tell you what, a good hustle by Turquin Mott to get over. Speedy just walked off the court, did not argue with the officials. It's a tough call there, but a good offensive rebound to come back. Turquin Mott, big game all night. And it's tough. It's right there. I mean, either way. But I'll tell you, tough call. I wouldn't want to be the official in that spot. Is wow. it still going up or is it right at the top? Tough call. National championship on the line. Do you call that goal 10 to end it? Well, we won't know tonight. We'll come back, wrap up this one from the Civic Center in a moment. Hey, this is John Gurevich inviting you to join me here on Sports Channel for Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider. It's the Sixers monthly television magazine. As John Slovakian, Tony Irving and I take you inside the personalities and stories that develop as the NBA season unfolds. There's a new show about the middle of every month right through to a postseason edition in May. Comcast Metrophone Sixers Insider here on Sports Channel. What looks best with a new look? How about a cavalcade of superstars like Dustin Hoffman, Gina Davis, and Andy Garcia in Hero? Wesley Snipes in Passenger 57, George Strait in Pure Country, Brad Pitt in Robert Redford's A River Runs Through It, Oscar winner Jeremy Irons in Waterland, Anthony Hopkins in Bram Stoker's Dracula, Kevin Costner in The Bodyguard, and Clint Eastwood in Unforgiven. For the best looking movie lineup on cable TV, call your cable company and take a look at the new Prism today. Back live at the Philadelphia Civic Center, 73-71. The Hawks, John Griffin has now beaten Speedy Morris three out of four. And he said something unusual was gonna happen down the stretch, and weren't you correct? A goaltending violation called. Here's the breakdown one more time. And they're all gathered around us to check out the monitors. Well, they have the clear out. It's a good move by St. Joe to clear it out, but the defense is excellent by Quincy Lee. There's your offensive rebound. Townsend's a guy that gets the ball, keep going. There comes 
wrap up top. The ball is there. And I'll tell you what, it's tight, but I think it's goaltending, and I think you gotta give the official a lot of credit to make the call right there. If he thinks it, he calls it. I'll tell you what, Speedy Morrow simply walked off the court, and the ball was on its way right above the cylinder. And the celebration begins for the St. Joseph's Hawks, and we'll come back, wrap it up at the Civic Center. Roberto Clemente was one of baseball's greatest heroes, both on and off the field. Known as one of baseball's greatest outfielders, Roberto was a 12-time All-Star, won four batting titles, but most of all was a world humanitarian until his untimely death in 1972. Now you can share a piece of this legend, commemorating the 20th anniversary of his death with his beautifully detailed 23 karat gold stamp. This officially endorsed gold stamp comes with its own first day cover inside a protective wallet, along with an official certificate of authenticity. For only $34.95, this valuable collectible is for baseball fans of every age. Here's how to order yours. Have your credit card ready and call to 1-800-735-3700. That's 1-800-735-3700. Or send $34.95 plus $450 shipping and handling for your 23-karat gold stamp and official first date cover to Roberto Clemente Gold Stamp, P.O. Box 1809, Department 5, Hicksville, New York, 11802. New York residents, please include sales tax. The power. The punishment. The pain. The ultimate sports spectacular. Now you can relive the excitement on home video with Top Rank's greatest knockouts. Volumes 1 and 2. Together on one full-length cassette. Legends like Hagler, Hearns, Arguello, Duran. 22 knockouts that changed boxing history. The courage, the champions, and the cheap shots. This is non-stop action, up close and in your face. Call now to order. A winner by a knockout. Top ranks, greatest knockouts. Volumes 1 and 2. Together only 1998. Don't miss the bell. Call now. Call now to order Top Rank's Greatest Knockouts. This video makes the perfect gift. Sorry, no CODs. For faster delivery, please have your credit card ready and call 1-800-782-9500. That's 1-800-782-9500. First, there was one Liberty place. Then they finished its companion, and the Philadelphia skyline seemed set. But the Sixers wanted a high rise of their own. Meet Philadelphia's newest skyscraper, 7 6 center Sean Bradley. How well can the city's tallest structure play? Find out this season on PRISM in exclusive games you won't see anywhere else on TV. Don't miss a true giant taking his first steps in the NBA. Call your cable company and order PRISM, the home court home of Sean Bradley of the Sixers. Big 5 Basketball on Sports Channel has been brought to you by your Quality Plus 4 dealer. Remember, five of the top 10 selling cars and trucks sold in America are at your local Quality Plus 4 dealer. By Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages, the Yellow Pages 9 out of 10 use, the genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages from Bell Atlantic. And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield, featuring the new Personal Choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. A terrific win for John Griffin St. Joseph's Hawks. They're now 6-5 with a 73-71 victory. An unlikely scenario in the final moment. The moment of truth was Rap Carry one-on-one -on -one with Quincy Lee, and we'll watch how it unfolds once more, Eddie. Well, the other thing people are talking about, they have time on the clock, and you'll see he gets it off before it shows all zeros. Reggie Townsend keeps it alive. That's the only chance Rap Curry has with five-tenths of a second. It's up there, and Mott, I got to believe that's goaltending. Good call, and the, they're happy, the Hawks. And credit to John Bonder, the referee, who had the gutsy goaltend call and score the basket, and Speedy Morris just simply turned and walked away. Rap Curry, our Blue Cross personal choice player of the game. The moment of truth belongs. We still remember Ken Durrett. Durrett, number 30.